Hello, I'm the Resolute Cartographer, and this is the 43rd video of my Mass Effect Legendary Edition series. In the last video, we recruited Samara, the Justicar. We now have all of our crew except for one member, and we're going to start running through some of the loyalty missions. In this video, we're going to go ahead and do Jacob's loyalty mission, which is to find his missing father, whose ship, the Hugo Gernsback, disappeared 10 years ago, but has suddenly started emitting an emergency beacon. So, let's go find it. You know, I probably should have checked the journal, but for now, we're just going to head out and see if we can't find it. Uh, oh yeah, I've got the increased probe bay and the increased uh, fuel. There we go. Let's jump out of here. Okay. So yeah, okay, it shows it anyway. Rosetta Nebula. Alright, let's see. So we gotta go to the Alpha Tacrona system, but we're gonna start off here in the Enoch system. We'll start off with this outer planet here. Goliath, a hydrogen helium gas giant, Goliath's orbit takes it near the system's mass relay. A useful event for the drive core discharges and automated helium-3 refueling platforms. Unfortunately, its orbit is currently taking it away from the relay, and it will continue this inconvenience for the next three galactic standard years. Okay. Now we'll scan this, and I will get back to you. All right, so Goliath had 2,927 iridium, 3,611 platinum, and 3,685 palladium. Okay, next up, let's see. Not that blue one. This one right here. Anomaly detected. Job. Job is a two-mooned habitable planet that is most well known for its mass extinction event. Thousands of years ago, Job was home to a primate-like spacefaring civilization, as well as abundant flora and fauna. However, this can only be deduced from time capsules put into the ground well outside of habitation centers. All cities and detectable dwellings were targeted in a massive orbital bombardment that turned them into vapor. The resulting dust shroud killed all the photosynthetic life and all fauna dependent upon it. Today, humans have recolonized the planet and are rapidly introducing their own species, beginning with cyanobacteria and heterotrophic bacteria to bring a stable level of oxygen and nitrogen for respiration. Travel advisory. Atmospheric pressure at sea level on Job is double that of Earth. Visitors with upper respiratory infections, emphysema, cancer, or a history of thoracic surgery should consult their physician before landing on Job. Population 21,553,000. Colony founded 2171. Capital New Jericho. Let's scan this thing and I'll bring you back. Oh. Sounds like we got some uh, pirates, maybe mercenaries. Scans have found something. Anomaly detected. Mercenary activity detected on the planet's surface. Communications match blue suns and coding protocols. Possible location for rumored site of illegal archaeological activity. Blue suns intentions unknown. Man, it really does feel like the mercenary corporations of the Mass Effect universe really are just pirates that have managed to get some sort of legal standing in a few places. <laughs> Anyways, just from that communication they just had right there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish scanning the planet. We will come back and we will land. It makes sense, by the way, that this planet has moderate resources because if it was habited before, it would make sense that they would have actually done some mining and stuff. Anyway, I'll bring you back. Okay, so Job had 4,361 element zero, 3,692 iridium, 7,412 platinum, and 3,035 palladium. Let's go ahead and land. Here we go. Okay, yep, Blue Sun Merc. I was kind of wonder, like, did we bring smoking to the galaxy? <laughs> Decided to bring the uh, Ilium recruits with me. Samara and Thane. Okay, let's see here. Why don't you go ahead and uh, throw field and you pull field. <laughs> and they're down. <laughs> Refined element zero. 175 of that. Oh, more element zero. Sounds like someone's getting shot at. 125 of that. 
So we're up to 300, element zero. Let's do some killing. Down. Uh, let's go ahead and throw field and uh, pull field again. Uh, I think we hit the corpse here. Oh man, these guys are just cannon fodder they're sending at us. Let's see, any more ammo that I need here? Apparently yes. Okay, let's get through here. Let's do another oh, hole field. Oh man. That doesn't seem to be as effective as throw field is. see what we got over here by these bunks. Man, they didn't do like any finishing on this room. These bunks are just sitting on a nice rough floor. Personal locker with 750 credits in it. Oh, he's still alive? Okay. Oh. This nice tactical glass that we're hiding behind here. Able to resist rounds that are accelerated with a little tiny mass effect accelerator. Or mass accelerator, I should say. Okay. I think all real gun or all guns in the Mass Effect universe are rail guns, if I remember correctly, so. Anyway, personal locker here. 750 credits. What do we got right here? More ammo. Med kit. Sorry, my cat is walking around on my desk and he's making me nervous right now because I fear he might knock stuff over. Uh control terminal, or sorry, computer terminal. Outgoing message, request for aid. Commander Santiago, hope you're doing well. We require your services once again in the transport of ourselves, our equipment, and our recovered artifacts. I have dispatched our representative to meet with you regarding the details of the transaction. Given the sensitive nature of our cargo, we expect discretion in this matter. Dr. Farin, Chief Researcher, Exogeny Special Projects. Oh, so it's Exogeny doing the illegal work out here. Incoming message, let's make a deal. Dr. Farn, of course you can count on us to offer you escort and transportation. We have sent men and ships your way in good faith. Commander Vito Santiago, co-executive officer, Blue Suns. So, Vito Santiago, if you don't remember, was uh, actually the enemy of uh, Zaid. He was one of the co-founders of the Blue Suns along with Zaid. And he ended up stealing the organization from him. Let's see. Okay, we're probably going to go that way, so let's check out this side room here. Personal locker, uh, 2,250 credits, and this probably just goes down to that last room where I killed that guy that was, yep, right over there. So it's just a bathroom, okay. Here we go. What is that up there? Huh, I don't know. Anyway, here we go. This definitely looks interesting. I mean, this stuff looks old, but maybe it's not that old. Oh, okay. Where are these enemies? Ah! Um... Uh, hmm. Let's go ahead and do... Oh, that was gonna do the disruptor, but... Now incinerate when I get the opportunity. And that's... Oh. There we go. Is that it? It's probably more, right? Time to die. Yep. Did 
Lieutenant Locke. Now it's just two troopers left, it looks like. Is that it? That seems to have been it. Okay. Let's check out this little corner here before we move further in. Nothing there. I wonder what these are. Tanks of some sort, maybe? Okay, here's some element zero. Another couple hundred. So that brings us up to 500. That's probably it. PDA. Lieutenant Locke. Once the artifact is secured and in transit, your orders are to take your men and rendezvous with Captain Voorhees aboard the MSV Strontium Mule and the Arn Larkin system in the Omega Nebula. Assist Voorhees in the capture if needed. Commander Santiago. Interesting. Recaptured derelict ship. So it looks like we're going to be going back to the Omega Nebula at some point soon. We've been to the Arn Larkin system, if I remember correctly. Let's head through here. I feel like I saw... No, it must have just been the element zero, because that was the color I saw. It was the blue. I thought it seemed like some sort of tablet. Whoa. That's a Prothean pyramid. Uh, Prothean video log. There's that beacon footage again. Recover the Prothean Relic. Eliminated the Blue Sun's presence at the dig site. Got 125 experience. 3,750 credits from Cerberus. 3,700 found. So, 7,500 total and 500 element zero, like I said. Okay, uh, let's check our mail. Commander, you've received a new message at your private terminal. Figured that would be the case. Blue Sun's activity traced. From Cerberus Command, we did a little due diligence on this Lieutenant Locke and his rendezvous with a Captain Voorhees. The coordinates we obtained from the last known location of the MSV Strontium Mule have been added to your galaxy map. It turns out that the Mule is carrying valuable cargo, including intel of a sensitive nature. We'd like you to track down the Strontium Mule and recover that cargo. Please pass the information to us. You can keep any other items of value you may find. Do what you will with, this, with the Blue Suns, okay? Still alive, from Detective Anaya. Greetings, Commander. I'm not completely sure this will get to you, but thanks again for helping me deal with Samara. The Eclipse Mercs have gotten real quiet around here, and my superiors have backed off too. No idea if the two are related, but hopefully the next time I meet a Justicar, I can give her the respect she deserves. I still can't believe I worked a case with one of them. You're a lucky human. If I find any more data on her target, I'll pass it along. Thanks, Detective Anaya Ilium Law Enforcement. Okay, that's... I like that their organization name isn't like Ilium Police Squad or Ilium Department of Security or something. It's just Ilium Law Enforcement. Okay. Alright, let's see. Uh, why am I back at Goliath? I don't... I don't know. Uh, I'll buy some more probes anyway while I'm over here. And we'll now head to whatever this blue one is. Mizraim. A small gas giant, Mizraim is primarily hydrogen and methane around a rocky core. There is no trace of the civilization from Job on Mizraim itself, but debris orbiting the planet indicates that artificial satellites were once in place before being destroyed. Probably they were Prothean, given that we found that Prothean ruin back on Job. Alright, I will scan this and I'll bring you back. Alright, so Mizraim had 2489 element 0, 1980 iridium, 3817 platinum, and 1814 palladium. Okay, leaving Mizraim behind, let's head to the last planet in the system. Laban. Laban is a desert world with sea upon sea of scorching hot, iron oxide wearing away marvelized cliffs. Its atmosphere is thick and layered with significant levels of oxygen trapped under an upper helium layer. Initially, surveyors detected traces of iridium from orbit, only to find a surprising archaeological discovery. The iridium came from bunkers on the surface, blown apart by dreadnought-class weapons. The logical conclusion was that the civilization on Job had reached Laban, and its outposts here were destroyed to make their extermination complete. Yep, that's what the Reapers do. Alright, scan this thing and I will uh, bring you back.
Okay, so Laban had 2,344 element zero, 9,101 iridium, 712 platinum, and 5,212 palladium. Okay. We are now fully scanned the Enoch system. Let's uh, buy the rest of the probes and oop, one short. Okay, let's head off all over to Alpha Draconis. I was tempted to go after that uh, little tiny quest chain we opened up, but we'll do that in another video. Okay, so we got two planets here. We're gonna go to the outer one first. 2175 AR2, still formerly unnamed, this planet is a hydrogen helium gas giant with 21 moon-sized objects. Okay, I'll scan this thing and I'll bring you back. Alright, so 2175 AR2 has 2323 iridium, 2625 platinum, and 2629 palladium. Okay. Leaving that one behind, let's go to the larger, well, it looks like it's larger here, probably isn't, 2175 Aya, Aya? I don't know. 2175 Aya, named after an Asari scientist, this remote planet appears to have been on a list of forbidden mass relays that led to uncharted space. The little data available comes from one far-off probe flyby that reports two planets orbiting a white dwarf star. Your own scans yield far more interesting results. The planet is within the habitable zone of the star. It has oceans of liquid water and a thin nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere consistent with carbon-based plant life. It is possible this is an as-yet unexplored garden world. Okay, let's scan this thing. There we go. I have found something. Uh... Weird, I didn't say anything. Alright, well, <laughs> I'll finish scanning and we'll land. I'll bring you back. Alright, so 2175 Aya has 5154 element zero, 2732 iridium, 10,226 platinum, and 5,727 palladium. Alright, let's land. Beautiful. It's crazy that no one seems to have gone looking for the Hugo Grins back. I mean, how many ships are out there that they can't spare someone to go look? And I know it's a crashed ship on a planet, but at the same time we found it. So, and I, yes, the beacon was going. I, have run a scan I don't know. Of the ship. I detect no life signs, but there may be useful technology or information still inside. There it is, and mostly intact. They could have survived impact, but it's been years. You, I feel like you could use AI, and not even like AI like ED, but just AI as we call it today, to effectively search scans of a planet for man-made like objects. Looks stripped after the crash. They'd have tried to get a beacon up as soon as possible. Okay, partial officer's log. Along with this anymore, we've done horrible things to the crew. The conditions they're in, they don't understand what we're doing to them. Distract them for two seconds and they forget what, what, what you did before the bruises show. It, it, it's got to stop. I'm talking to the others as soon as it Yeah. Bad stuff happened here. I'll just say that. Repeat. Toxology alert. Danger of rapid neural decay. From the look of it, this beacon's been here a while. Why would they wait years to signal? Pause in beacon protocol. Eight years, 237 days, seven hours. Pause is recorded as... Record deleted by acting captain Ronald Taylor. That's not right. My father was first officer. Ronald Taylor was promoted under emergency command protocols. Other flagged issues, unsafe deceleration, local food and neural decay, beacon activation protocols. Who's in command of this ship? Where are the survivors? Captain Harris Fairchild reported killed following unscheduled suborbital descent. First Officer Ronald Taylor promoted infield to acting captain. But where is he now? The location of the remaining crew of the Hugo Gernsback is unknown. This beacon has been unattended for several maintenance cycles. I assume unsafe deceleration refers to the crash. Give me the details. Following an unspecified impact and sublight drive failure, the Hugo Gernsback made an unscheduled descent at 465% oh. of theoretical recommended suborbital velocity. 
The Hugo Gernsback then decelerated at 782% of theoretical recommended approach velocity, sustaining significant damage to investment and crew. Not bad. Local food impairs brain functions? What are the effects? Impairment of mental function due to chemical imbalance begins within seven days of ingesting local flora, regardless of decontamination or preparation. Impact on higher cognitive abilities and long-term memory is cumulative, but significant within a standard month. It is not known if neural decay is permanent. Data collection was not completed. Why wasn't the beacon activated before now? This emergency beacon became functional after 358 days, 12 hours following the unscheduled suborbital descent of the Hugo Gernsback. Activation was triggered remotely after eight years, 237 days, seven hours, on the authority of Acting Captain Ronald Taylor. Pause in beacon protocol is recorded as record deleted. Yep, come on, let's get going. Let's check the ship. My father had the beacon for almost nine years. Maybe that neural decay affected him. Avoiding it for a decade seems unlikely. It's just very strange that they fixed the beacon after a year and then waited nine years. Anyway, got some spare parts there. We'll find out why they did that here in just a minute. But I think there might be some more over here. Now it looks like the path might continue. I know that our final destination is not within the ship, so we're going to go this way. I just hope that we don't have to backtrack too far. Doctor's log. What? What was her name? Sarah? S Suzanne? My God, I can't remember. I can't remember her face. We need to get out, so I can remember, c can think straight. They have to hurry. It's kind of amazing that this equipment is functional after ten years in this environment. Not good stuff ahead. Anyway, uh, PDA. 3,000 credits. Partial crew log. I think we're done here on the ship. Let's get back out there. But yeah, so we got neural degradation from eating the local flora, and then a man referring to harassing a woman in the past having been an issue, but now it's not. So I think you can see where we're kind of going here. You came? From the sky? The leader said someone would come. He delayed for so long, but he still has power. Some have lost faith. The hunters. They will have seen your star. They will not let you help him. What are you talking about? You're not making sense. Uh, I... I don't remember how to say it. He's our leader and we serve so we can go home. But some want to fight him. They were... They were cast out. He exiled them. So they hunt his machines and those who help him. They don't believe that rescue will come. Hunters, they won't stop until the leader is dead. Kill them. Agents of the liar. He will not escape. On our left. <clears throat> <clears throat> What are you doing, Jacob? Firing now. 
Jeez. Invasion of my personal space there. I should have done it. That wasn't neural decay. They were feral. My father wouldn't let this go on. Something is very wrong. Got a weird uh, mesh thing here. Her neck. Like, just look at the necklace part of the neck there. Let me just... Look at that. So, like, the skin meets up with the bottom of the necklace and matches it. That's just creepy. You killed them, but there are more every day. They want to fight, but I just want to go home. She's lost. We need to find someone who can make sense of this. Yep. All right. This planet's beautiful. It really does suck that the uh, flora can't be eaten. Okay, we got a stripped mech. Stripped for parts. Tech's wearing out. Those hunters must be laying on the pressure. What do we got up here? That a settlement? They'd better be friendlier than the beach group. I need answers. Note the difference in the uh, genders represented in the hunters and then these uh, docile They're villagers. Docile, but in the same uniform remnants as those who attacked us. There aren't any men here. Maybe it affects genders differently. Makes males get violent. Possibly, but the woman on the beach said the exiled ones came back as hunters. It doesn't matter right now. One of these people must know what my father has to do with this. You have his face. He promised to call the sky, but he sends nothing. He forced us to eat, to decay. You are cursed with his face. Not the best reaction to the family resemblance, Jacob. Why would my father force his crew to eat toxic food? Whatever's happening here needs to stop. Food stores. Look at these spoiled food stores. They've been eating only that toxic local food for who knows how long. Like that wasn't obvious enough. Med kit. Okay, we got a uh, statue. What the hell? Somebody had to push them to make that. That's borderline worship. It's so weird. He keeps us, protects us, and we please him like he demands. Yeah. The hunters will kill you. They fight because he exiled them and waited too long. He is bad. He has a bad face like the other. Like him. You'll hurt me. Nope. Not planning on it. Alright, let's see. <coughs> oh, Max. Not that one. Alright. PDA. Trolls like that are a little much against this bunch. Well, that would make them hate him. Maybe it was just for defense. More spare parts over here. Looks like there's more people up there, even. There we go. Let's keep moving. Please, here. You could end it. You have his face. But you fight his machines. You might stop this. This, I forget how to read. But this was the start. What he promised, and what they did to us. We need the sky. Take us back to the sky. Jacob, what does it say? It's a crew logbook. Some of them thought the beacon repair was taking too long. They were afraid they'd run out of supplies and lose their minds to the decay. My father restricted the ship food for himself and the other officers so they wouldn't be affected. Everybody else had to eat the toxic food and hope for treatment later. The rest is a casualty list. A few mutinied over the decision. My father and his officers turned the mechs on them. The beacon was fixed after a year, so the plan must have worked. Why no signal? Those weren't the last entries on the casualty list. More incidents, harsh punishments. It's like they're cattle or toys in a year. All the male crew members are flagged as exiled or dead. They separated out the women, assigned them to officers like pets, and 
After the beacon is fixed, the officers appear in the casualties too. After. My father took control and didn't stop it. Oh, well. Anything in there about whether the effects of the toxic food can be treated? Nothing. But it seems like the right call. If everyone gets it, who's left to fix the beacon? You'd never get out. But they did fix it. And the signal wasn't sent until now. I'm starting to see why. Does it say why he separated the men and the women? Or is it as bad as it seems? No, it turns to gibberish. Maybe the men got violent early on, but from the state of this place, I'd say the hunter thing is recent. What he allowed here, Shepard? I don't see any justification. We haven't seen any other officers. He killed them? There were five after the crash. Medical, engineering, bridge staff. Should have had no problem fixing the beacon and keeping people safe. All killed within the same week. Jeez. About a month after the beacon was repaired. Do you see an explanation for this? He's your father. Is he? None of this fits. Maybe the initial decision, but the rest? Abuse of power doesn't get any clearer than this. I need to find this man. All right. Uh, initiate this mech to explode, or enact the mech set it to explode. There we go. Ooh. Let's move back. Okay. It's odd that those mechs managed to get through. Wow. Okay. Dead God bodies. It. It's really him. Just got free. He's covering his ass. Yep. The old corpse has been posed like a warning. The new ones were left where they fell. The hunters started fighting back. Jeez. Oh. Activity. Seems like Max were the only thing that he had left that were loyal to him. Yeah, of course you didn't have a choice. Salad for 1500 credits. Okay, I think that was it. He had his fun, and now he wants out. Son of a bitch. Let's go get him. We're not here to rescue you. This thing is not my father. Medical station. Spare parts. 
power cells. Now that we really need them. Get to some actual cover. Okay, back to disruptor ammo. Back. Oh, got to bring Jacob back. And now incendiary ammo. Nope, nope. Sorry now. Gotcha. Oh. Enough with the toy. I need to look my father in the eye here to justify this. That was rough. <laughs> Nearly died so many times there. Okay. Uh, let's see. Element Zero. Anything else? I think that was. Oh, here we go. PDA. 2400 credits. And there's Captain Taylor. Anything else here to take? I don't see anything in particular. Okay. You're here. I knew a real squad would blow through just fine. Sorry if the mech scuffed your pants. Jesus. I'll get you something nice when we get back to Alliance Space. I've gotta have some back pay coming. What about your crew, acting captain? Total loss. The toxic food turned them wild. They propped me up here in some kind of ritual behavior. Waiting for a chance to signal has been hell. Oh. That's the best you can do? You let all your people talk back like that? <laughs> Who are you exactly? Commander Shepard of the Normandy. I believe you're acquainted with Mr. Taylor. Taylor? Jacob? No. Not Jacob. Why not me? Would ten years of this look better to anyone else in the galaxy? You have to understand. This isn't me. The realities of command, they change you. I wasn't ready for that. I made sure you were taught right. Before I left, I <laughs> hoped to leave it at that. I'm not unreasonable, Captain. But ten years? What happened? God damn it! Why did you do this to your crew? There was resistance to the plan. Mutiny. We had to take a hard line to keep order. And things settled down. As the decay set in, we made sure the crew were comfortable. Some even seemed happier. Ignorance is bliss, right? And they were grateful for guidance. Like an instinct. Pure authority was... Easy. At first. Months in, the effect lowered inhibitions. They got territorial. Rank, protocol, they couldn't understand. We had to establish dominance. After a while, the perks seemed normal. That's it? You created a harem and played king? Ten years in a juvenile fantasy? I can't point to where it all went wrong. But when the beacon was ready, revealing what happened didn't seem like a good idea. What happened to the other officers? Anders found his conscience a little late to step back. He had an accident. God. Things got tense. End of the day, I was the one with the mechs. I got a little basic in setting examples. But I was kind to my people once things settled down. Seemed like I'd earned some peace. You fought over people like they were toys. Things. You didn't feel any responsibility to get out of here for the sake of family? 
I gave him a good start. He was a smart kid and was better off not following me. We figured that out a long time before I took jobs in deep space. And after things escalated here, it seemed best to just disappear off the galactic map. Till you needed someone to save your ass. The stores from the ship couldn't last forever. You had to know this would end one day. Dining for one can really stretch things out. Besides, I can think of a lot worse retirement plans than stripping down and joining the droolers. That was before the hunters, of course. Dumb or not, I'd feel it if they got their hands on me now. They want blood. I'd prefer to keep it. <laughs> it's all about you. Everything. We can help these people. Cerberus can have ships here in days and pull everyone out. He's not worth the fuel to haul him out or the air he's breathing. He's damn lucky I don't think he's even worth pulling the trigger. I don't know who you are, because you're not any father I remember. We'll secure him for an Alliance court. For every year here, he'll have ten to think about it. Give him all the time in the galaxy. The man who did this doesn't know right from wrong. I'm sorry, Jacob. I did the best I could. I'm ten years past believing that. Hmm. All right, 750 experience, got to level 21, got one squad point. Survivors from the planet are being treated by Alliance personnel with additional Cerberus support. Pleased to see Taylor unharmed psychologically by the experience, Jacob Taylor has dealt with his father and is now fully, solely fo focused on the mission. Uh, we got uh, Jacob's new power, Barrier, and his new outfit. Some credits, 28,500 and 500 element zero. Alliance ships are inbound to secure Captain Taylor and his crew commander. We'll be long gone by the time they get here. Don't even give them the taillights. Roger that. What do you mean it wasn't you? Jacob, if I had leaked the information about the Gernsback, I would be smiling at your resolution of the situation. I am not smiling. Nothing goes through this ship, my ship, without a report to you. I had no more reason to believe Jacob's father was alive than he did, but I'm happy to know the situation is behind you. Fine, you didn't forward it, so who did? I did. Figures, who else could get into Cerberus channels? It was hardly classified, just obscure. There was a time when it mattered to you. Sending this along seemed like keeping an old promise. I keep my promises. Miranda, we'll discuss your liberal interpretation of security <laughs> protocol in private. Shepard, Jacob. You good with this, Jacob? It's all bull, Shepard. Captain Taylor can rot in prison. Doesn't change who I am. What I know. I've already mourned the man he used to be. I guess he was a good enough father that even he can't screw up what he taught me. You had no idea Miranda was behind this? No, she's got a good memory. Selective, but good. I haven't thought about those days in a long time. Can't figure which promise she meant, though. Not sure I really want to know. She requires a better man than I. Come on, we've got work to do. Aye, Commander. Shepard. Thanks for the help. Anytime, Jacob. Okay. Let's uh, go ahead and... I don't think we actually got any upgrades on that mission, did we? Well, we can still go talk to Jacob now that he's completed his loyalty mission. Thanks for diverting to the Gurns back, Shepard. I appreciate being able to clean up that mess. And don't worry. It will not affect how I do my job. It's over. I'm interested in getting to know you better. Already? I'm not big on forcing these talks, Shepard. Let's do this later. We'll talk later. Commander. Okay. I guess he's not ready to talk right after the loyalty mission. Can I do anything about this? Let's see, can I change? No, I think that only changes their weapons. I was going to see if I can update his outfit, but I don't think so. Because once they complete their loyalty mission, they do get another outfit as well. Samara wants a moment with you, Commander. Oh, looks like she's ready for her loyalty mission. Samara has tracked down her Ardot Yakshi that she's been hunting. 
Oh, that's Kasumi. How do I keep messing that up? I am glad you came. I must ask for your help. That is not easy for me. It's all right. Just tell me what you need. When we met on Ilium, I told you about a very dangerous person I was pursuing. Using the information you obtained, I have located her. She's been going by the name Morinth. I would like to apprehend her before she disappears again. Didn't you say you'd pick up her trail after our mission? I know where she is, right now. In a month, she may be gone. This is the best opportunity I've ever had. Where is she? Omega. A nightclub called Afterlife, which seems a perfect place for her to hunt. How important is this? Killing her has been my focus for 400 years. Whoa. It is the most important thing in my life, and the reason I became a Justicar. Tell me about her. She is an Ardot Yakshi. It is a term from a dead Asari dialect. It means demon of the night winds, but that is mythology. She is simply a very dangerous woman who kills without mercy. So is an Ardot Yakshi a special kind of murderer? Morin suffers a rare genetic disorder. When she mates with you, there is no gentle melding of nervous systems. She overpowers yours, burns it out, hemorrhages your brain. You end up a mindless shell, and soon after, you are dead. So you hunt down these Asari just because they're born with a genetic condition? It manifests with maturity. When one is diagnosed, she is offered the chance to live in seclusion and comfort. If she refuses, it shows her addiction to the ecstasy she gets from killing her mates. There is no redemption for such a person. Can't she abstain? Each encounter gives her strength. The effect is narcotic. The more she does it, the more she needs to do it. She will never stop. She can't. Why isn't this ever mentioned in Asari literature or art? When we were primitive, there was much fascination with Ardot Yakshi. Some cultures worshipped them as gods of destruction. Now the Asari have a place in the galaxy, and they don't wish this defect to be widely known. As far as I know, only three exist today. Two chose a life of seclusion. The third ran. Morinth. She ran, and I am sworn to kill her. This is definitely worthy of your full attention. She confuses her victims, twists their feelings. They will do anything for her favor. We need to stop her. Thank you, Commander. There are no words to express what this means to me. There is one thing more. This creature, this monster. She is my daughter. You said this is genetic. How many children do you have? Three. And three Ardat Yakshi are in existence today. It is as it sounds. Marinth was always the wild one. She was happy and free. But selfish. I cannot imagine what this is like for you. I do not want pity, Shepard. I do not accept it. My daughter's condition is my fault, and my redemption lies in killing her. Do not pity me. Simply understand my situation. How did all this happen? I spent my youth on the move, adventuring. I killed people, mated with them, or just danced the night away. I learned so much, experienced so much, and then my matron days came. I could finally sit back, bask, and enjoy my family. But in one moment, it was all taken away. It sounds terrible. I sat in a med lab while a nearsighted doctor droned at me, and I learned that nothing was as I thought it would be. I gave up all that I possessed. I owe nothing, claim nothing. All my knowledge will die with me. Now my purpose is to destroy my own children. Those moments change you. And I've hundreds of years left to live with that. I say too much. Forgive me. Help me find my long-lost daughter, and kill her. We'll go find Morinth. Man. That is pretty heavy. Okay, um, jeez. This has been a pretty dark episode of this series. No messages for you, Commander. Let's see if Kelly has anything to say. I'm surprised by Thane's spiritual side. His psych profile mentioned little of it. 
And he carries himself with such cold confidence. I'm not sure if I find him scary or sexy. A lot of women like bad boys. That is a dirty stereotype. In my case, it happens to be true, but still. Anyway, what's up? Is there anything I should know? Nothing right now. Anything else, Commander? That'll be all. It's always nice chatting with you. Okay, well, let's take a look at the uh, journal. Yeah, we now have all the loyalty missions but one, and all crew members but one. So, in the next video, I think what we're going to do is we're going to do one more loyalty mission, then we're going to go ahead and do the Overlord DLC. So, in the next video, we're going to go ahead and help Miranda with her loyalty mission, where her sister is uh, being hunted by her father. Uh, her sister is her twin sister. She tried to uh, decide to keep her sister safe from her father, because her father created them through genetic experiments and wants them to basically be his dynasty and they have no interest in that being the case so anyway next video miranda's loyalty mission this has been the resolute cartographer thanks for watching i'll see you again next time